So when you look at the Lightning Network today, and you, you look at those three factors, uh, reliability and fees and latency, how does the Lightning Network compare today to traditional fiat payment yeah. rails or existing rails? Yeah, so I mean, even today, it depends on what you optimize for already. So I have recently released the software that goes along with the paper that we published last year. Um, which you can find on my GitHub repository under the name Picard Payments because a lot of people started to calling it this way. And last month I finally decided that I would also like go along and, and call it this way. And what you can do with those is you can basically already optimize for at least fees and reliability. I'm, I'm working on also including latency. Um, and, and when you do the simulations, what you see is if you optimize solely for reliability, you're going to pay a fee of roughly 4,000 ppm which is like 0.4% with the fees that are currently on the network. However, if you optimize mainly for fees, you pay something like 1,500 PPM, right? So that's already like mainly only a third of the price. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot more failed attempts, a lot of more retries, right? So, and, and then you do something in between where you, at least according to my simulations as of right now, pay something like 2,000 PPM, which is 0.2%. Um, the reliability is obviously not as good as using something like Visa, right? I mean, Visa basically always works as long as your internet connection works of the point of sale system uh, perspective. Here we have much more retries and also the latency is higher. So currently for a single onion or for a single payment to settle, the median time, even when using probabilistic pathfinding, I think Christian measured something like five seconds, five point something seconds, and that's the median, right? So 50% of the payments take more. Oh. Um, and I mean, this is something where I used to say there's room for improvement. This is also why I want to like look at latency. Um, and for example, we can improve latency, I think quite a bit if we have L2 channels in the future, because the round trip time to negotiate a new state will be re reduced, right? Um, a lot of these questions are also related to what we implement in the software, right? So for example, right now, all the Lightning implementations optimize for fees. So the nodes are actually trying to like underbid each other with fees. But as soon as our solution is being utilized more, um, what will happen is when you have a large channel that's highly reliable, you can actually from the game theory already charge a higher fee, right? So then you certainly start to like price for liquidity and for a reduction in uncertainty, right? So I would guess that the fee market will have a very different dynamic over the next years when the people who are sending payments actually change their dynamics, right? The same way in including latency into the feature, right? Because uh -huh. now you might like, like currently my solution even would prefer a very slow channel that goes from Norway to Australia just because it's a large channel and it's a cheap channel, right? But the latency is obviously really bad, right? And mm -hmm. I mean, everybody naturally understands that I should probably take the channel uh, from from uh, Norway to Germany <laughs> that is almost the same size and a little bit more expensive, but is much faster to try, right? So, so, so a lot of this like dynamic will actually change if we optimize for different things because then the people will charge their fees differently, right? So, so it's very hard to foresee these things in the future. Do you think it's realistic to expect higher fees in the future on lightning yes yeah uh More yes time. and no <laughs> yes yeah. and no so 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 i know for example that the zero fee routing guy was uh, in your show yes. uh, i haven't watched that episode but i have talked to him quite a bit um and and i find it very intriguing what he's doing right because he's basically saying hey look all the implementations are basically optimizing for fees right now so i charge zero fee everybody's routing through me all the people who are rebalancing are using my node i mean this is great Right? And how does he earn money? He basically asks for uh, the PPM on the inbound liquidity. Yes. But if you think about this, and he probably said this to you, this is very similar to how current payment systems work, right? Because if you are a shop and you want to use this, you, you buy your inbound liquidity at like 2000 PPM, 3000 PPM, whatever is the price, right? I mean, it's very similar to installing a point of sale system where you as the merchant pay a certain fee in order to like be able to receive money, right? And the uh -huh. customer doesn't see the fee in the moment of making the payment anymore, right? So, so, so what I'm saying is what, what could very well happen is 
that the fee on the Lightning Network, because of behavior like this, which to some degree is very rational from the service provider, because if I open the channel with you and I charge a PPM for the routing, the routing actually have to take place, right? That's a risk on my end. Uh -huh. right? But if I charge zero PPM and you pay me when I open the channel, the risk now is on you. You are the merchant. You're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to like sell products. That's your economic risk. And for me, it's really great, right? So, so what I'm saying is the game theory, I think, has not played out yet of what we do. So, so it might very well end up in a world where we just don't pay fees for routing at all. But of course, indirectly, the fees are being paid at channel opening and from the merchants. And then, of course, the consumers pay this in higher prices in the stores. Thank you.